Today, folks, in the studio, fresh live in Las Vegas, Nevada, we've got a real treat for you, Nate Kennedy. What's cracking, Nate? What's going on, man? Excited to be here and chat. If you guys don't know who he is, you can check him out, Nate Kennedy, MD, on social media. Why the MD? You're also known as the doctor of marketing. Is, <laughs> is the MD for real or no? So, no, the MD is not real. I, I Actually, uh, Nate Kennedy won when I set up an email, wasn't available. Or, I, or Nate Kennedy wasn't available at Gmail many, many, many years ago. So I bought, I went with Nate Kennedy MD instead of Nate Kennedy one or two. Yeah. Went with the uh, marketing doctor back then. And that was it. Just, uh, it just seemed, seemed to fit. So the marketing doctor. So Nate is above all a husband and a father. Your wife, Susan and two children are, as you put it, your greatest accomplishments. Yes, sir. Well, they must be wonderful then <laughs> yeah you know it's uh there i say that family about, life, i said know? that about grant cardone the other day you know grant cardone yeah yeah like someone asked me you know what was it like working with him and man you know they were just awe inspired by the dude which again he's done some pretty impressive shit mm -hmm. but i said uh in my mind his greatest accomplishments are his kids because his kids are great Mm -hmm. You know, well-behaved, speak multiple languages, like freaking outgoing, not shy. Mm -hmm. It's like, I always think, cause my kids, I introduce, if I, if they were sitting right here and I introduce them to you right now, you know, one of them's going to turn away and, and into my leg. Like, I don't know why. And it's like, dude, how do you get the kids to freaking open up? You know, how are your kids? Man, they're, they're two opposites. Uh, they but I mean, are, are they shy? Yeah, they my my daughter will be real shy until she gets to know you, and then she's outspoken. She'll go on and on. My my son's pretty. My son's a lot like me, man. He's pretty even keel. Just gonna he'll say hi, he'll shake your hand, and, and do that. He's the older one. And then, uh, but yeah, I mean, I would say it, I actually listened to that uh, episode there with Grant. And it was you know listen to what he said, the training he put them through. I found pretty interesting, you know, to build them to where that. That in, you know, the, the, the way that they are right with walking into a room and having no fear. Yeah. So I would say my kids are like that yet, yeah, but you know, we're working on that, trying to get them there. So am I, so am I. <laughs> All right. So folks, if you don't know him, he's, his claim to fame is he's had some extreme success in marketing. Is it mainly digital marketing? Yeah. Everything's been digital. So funnels, shit like that. Funnels. Yeah. We started a funnel company back in 2011 before all the, the funnel craze was really kind of coming out and uh we did that we've funnels paid traffic when i first got into the marketing space like i had to really figure it out on my own so i learned how to build pages i learned how to run paid traffic and everything else and back in the day when i got in affiliate marketing was enormous right so you grow your list affiliates would promote you well you know there's kind of this good old boy crowd piece and i never really got into it so what i had to do was go figure out how to get my own lead. So I just started buying traffic and figuring it out. So we were running Google back in the day, running, then and Facebook came on, we started doing more of that. And, you know, we've done YouTube ads, all that kind of stuff, right? So we just had to figure out paid ways to get leads and grow customers. What was your and, average cost per lead? Oh, that's a loaded question. What piece, what, you know, so we- What's your highest we, ever? Uh, man, we get highest ever? The cost per lead. Cost per lead highest has been over, you know, Fifty dollars at one point. Dude, I got one right on now for eighteen hundred. Oh, and guess what we're selling? Something for eighteen hundred. <laughs> so it cost eighteen hundred to sell something for eighteen hundred. Well, your cost per sale then eighteen hundred. You're saying? Well, the cost per lead is takes eighteen hundred dollars yeah. to get them to 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 buy. Oh, you're breaking even. Right. Yeah. Now most people would think that's a bad thing. No, that's a good thing, isn't it? Oh, it's phenomenal. Because if you can break yeah. even, you can blow up your brand just by spending all the dough. You can spend a million dollars a month, get back a million dollars a month, spend a million dollars a month, just keep that cycle. Your brand blows up even though you're not making any money. You're making future money for damn sure. You're building a brand. You're, get, you're growing an audience. And not only that, you can figure out how to kind of almost cross sell in that same database because now you can target those people. Oh, 100%. I think biggest challenge is, I mean, well, great that you're getting them in at, you know, it doesn't matter what the cost of the, the, the customer is, as long as you're monetizing it. And it does, you know, I find that a lot of people, they, they focus so much on being profitable on day one when they're running paid ads or they'll run like $500 in ads and go, oh, it didn't work. But it doesn't, what's happening 30, 60, 90 days once that person comes in, right? And so, I mean, 
being able to break even on the front end, if you got a real business, you're going to have stuff on the back end to offer them, right? Hopefully. So, what yeah, if you hopefully. don't? Figure it out. Ask them what their biggest problem is and solve that too, right? People come in, they come into your system, they want to work with you, you get them on board, they're going to have other problems because once once you get them from A to B, a whole new set of problems open. So if you're doing things or have opportunities that you can help them with, that's exactly where you, you just figure that out. And would, if you got the customer list, you can ask them, right? Would you call that vertical integration? Uh, yeah. Sometimes you can go, it doesn't have to go vertical, but yeah. Well, usually it's better when it mm -hmm. pertains to what you helped them with in the first place. Yep. Like if I were to help you build a VT system to teach people to do what you do, that's why these studios are here. That's vertical mm -hmm. integration. Cause I'll bet you anything, I'm going to need to help you figure out the filming of it and the editing okay. of it. And then, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So you open studios, that's, it's all related. Oh yeah. So if someone's out there listening to this, cause I got a little, lot of business owners and entrepreneurs listening to this. And I hear a lot of people say, yeah, I tried the, the, paid ads, it didn't work. What would you say to those people? Cause oh, it does work. It works. The question is, is what was your copy? What was your offer? You know, there was, there could have been some things to tweak. Maybe you didn't, mm -hmm. you know, target correctly. Maybe you didn't retarget. Maybe you missed some of those things. Cause there's a lot to know. It's not just cause I can get in the back of Facebook and place an ad. And believe me, Facebook will let me spend whatever budget I set for myself. <laughs> yes, they will. The question is, is will yeah. it return? Well, there's some fundamentals mm -hmm. that marketers know that would not necessarily be commonplace if you were just trying it on your own. So what, what are some of those things to look out for? And number one, it's usually the wrong offer. So people don't fully understand what they're selling or who they're selling to. And when they don't know that, it's the wrong offer wrong market message. And I think the biggest challenge when stuff doesn't work is because people are trying to go, if you have a very niche offer, but you try to go very broad on targeting, right? And you're trying to like, hey, I've got five different types of people that buy this product and you're trying to create one ad or one system that'll sell to all five of those people. And I see that a lot. And then another big issue when it doesn't work, and actually, we just posted a video on this called ad congruency, right? Marketing congruency. Biggest challenge is so many people, though, I just reviewed one. A buddy of mine sent me this. He's like, hey, it's not working. I can't figure it out. I looked right at it, and it was like he had one message on the ad, a completely different message on the landing page. There was no congruency. So people are looking for BS, right? When they, when they see an ad, they're looking for, all right, it got my attention, but is it real? They're looking for a reason to, you know, Got that gotcha moment, right? They're looking for that. And so if you have no congruency, you're giving them it instantly. So if you have congruency between the offer that you're making and the offer that they're getting and that they see on the landing page, you're going to have a much better conversion rate. But a lot of people miss that. It's such a simple thing, but it gets missed a lot. So, I mean, we go on for days about how to, how to fix a funnel and, and with paid ads, but you know, there's, there's so many things that could be, could be wrong. Potentially you got, you know, if you narrow down your message to be one, uh, one person and just figure out one problem that you want to solve and focus solely on that, that's going to be beneficial if they're, if they're running ads, but otherwise hire an expert. Oh, one other piece. If you're a if you think you're a copywriter, you're not, <laughs> uh, many people always, I feel they, uh, they tend to, they tend to say I can write my own copy when they start getting into marketing. And I, what I have found, there's, there's a reason people pay copywriters good money. They're, they're phenomenal wordsmiths. They're really good at down in the message, right? And making it sound good. So, you know, spend the money on the copywriters on the front. And a lot of people just write an ad and put up a lander and go, this should work. I lost money. I did Where do you go get good copywriters? Oh, man. Uh, I guess... I, I don't, I just have relationships over the years that I, that I'll use, but there's all kinds of, you can go into different Facebook groups that have copywriters that are just begging for jobs and looking for someone to work with. You know what I mean? So well, it's if they're um, so valuable. Why is everyone begging for a job? Well, cause there's so many of them now. Cause you got people teaching copywriters, you know, but they're not, to be copywriters. there's not many good ones. Yeah. So the tough part is good ones. Good ones are going to be expensive. So how do you find them? I'd look at their past work, right? Yeah. But you got to find them before mm -hmm. you can look at anything. Yeah, you can go look at, well, great question. Like there ain't, so, a, there ain't a copyright association of America? 
Oh, I don't find them from there. I just have them through. I've I've gotten to copywriter ways. I've gotten to co- two copywriters is going to. Uh, I've been in mastermind groups for so many years. I think joined my first one in two thousand eight. It was, and then been in one ever since. And you know, you meet them in those different marketing groups. You can meet them at go to marketing events. You're going to meet copywriters because they're going to be there. But once you meet them, you got to understand. You can also <laughs> go in these groups, right? The Facebook groups. That's the fastest path to get them. Right, get access to them, but ask them for the work they've done. Yeah. Ask them for the client testimonials. That's the thing is a lot of copywriters. And if a copywriter tells you he hits a home run every time, that's not the copywriter you want to hire because copywriter doesn't hit a home run every time. Now you have a book out called all gas, no breaks. Yes. What's that about? Uh, 11 lessons, 11 lessons I learned from going, uh, from rebuilding after going bankrupt and losing everything. So it so was lessons a, you learned the hard way. Less, yeah, the hard way. So I don't have to. <laughs> exactly. That's the title of my book. I know. I was, I was looking at it over there and, her, and uh, it was 11 lessons, man. I think you got what, 13? 14? 16. 16? All right. 16 so far. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. People are starting to like that book. Um, lessons are good to give out because, again, I mean, you can, I can learn from the lessons you learn without having to go learn them myself, mm-hmm. which is the smartest way to learn them. Absolutely. And the cool part about the lessons is if you've already lived it and learned it, it's it's probably fair to say that someone else is going to learn the same thing with or without your book, but it's just a lot cheaper with your book because, because mm-hmm. they don't want to learn the same shit on their own. <laughs> so folks go get his book. All gas, no breaks. Where do they get that? If they want Amazon, it? Amazon or Nate plus Kennedy. before I forget Nate Kennedy.com. If you like what he's saying, I don't know if you do this for a living now, do you help companies? What do you do? Yeah, we do. Uh, we take on some clients here and there, like as more of on a consulting side to help them out if they got something in place that they need to expand. We don't do any client work anymore for funnel development or paid ads, anything like that. We uh, Did we, you used to? I used to, did for years, long that was, time. That was like an agency? Yeah, so I had an agency for a long time where we did it. Uh, it all actually, the agency grew because I had built and sold online companies. We did seven of them, online companies built and sold them. And so I did all that with funnels and paid traffic. And so people started coming to me and asking me if I could help them. And then as I pop in, grew the agency, started helping them do it. And it kind of just had a life of its own. Challenge was I became the hired gun. And so I was getting phone calls on the weekends, you know, put my team in place. They'd still want to talk to me since that's who they hired. And I didn't want to be in that space anymore. So I ended up basically saying, hey, if we don't own the brand or have ownership in the brand, we, we won't work on it. Paid That's ads right. still successful today, still work today. Absolutely. Not as good as before or better? Well, I think they work just as good, but you gotta have you gotta have a full assault, right? You can't a lot of a lot of people are just gonna run a paid ad, try and sell day one, and if they don't sell, they don't do anything else. And one thing that we do a lot of now is email. Massive amounts of email. We send about seventy to seventy five million emails a month right now. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of people who do not take advantage of that piece. So like reach a paid ad, you got to have a follow-up campaign. You got to have, you know, upsells, you got to have a backend high ticket offer, right? Depending on the space that you're in, right? If you're in the coaching space or information space, you got to have these things in place, retargeting campaigns, you want to have affiliates promoting. So there's a lot of things that go into building your online business and the days of, paid ads being the only way to scale in my opinion is you can do it but it's not going to it your business isn't going to produce and provide as much as it possibly could because you're really just being a one trick pony at that point and not really expanding out what are some other ways email take advantage of that buyer list that email list you know one thing that we love doing is building a bigger audience so we we use a one step funnel piece we build this uh, big audience of people in a larger demographic that are buying in multiple niches, right? So finance, conservative, it's conservative audiences we like to build. So you got the finance space, you've got the uh, uh, tactical survival and health space, right? They're all buying in those different niches. So for us, we like to build a big audience. And I think that's one thing people are missing is, you know, that's another way that you can do that, build a bigger audience and then provide your different offers to them. So email's huge, retargeting obviously, and, as I mentioned as well, affiliate marketing. If, if you get people out there, also cross promotions, going to somebody who already has a list and have them send an email for you. Go to someone else who already has a, you know, maybe someone who has a 
if you provide a product and then over here's a company that has a software, there's a strategic relationship there where you guys can help each other grow through your promotions together as well. So there's a lot of different ways, but those are some of them. So if someone's thinking, man, I wish he could do this for me, they can't anymore. But, uh, what if like they read your book? Does that have anything to do with it? Yeah, this? we got a, a decent amount of marketing in there. And I have, and I give a lot of marketing stuff away too now, just knowledge and, and whatnot, try and help. How following um, you? Yeah, through following, you know. So you follow them at Nate Kennedy MD, by the way. Yeah. So <clears throat> when I'm listening to this, because again, everybody's, in my opinion, potentially not marketing as much as they could. Definitely not. Even me, even everybody. You know, I see your ads now. You got some ads up and going. Well, a few, yeah. um, but just for like a, f- a few events that are happening. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe closer school. There's, I'm starting. I've never done it before. You know, I have a team that does it, obviously, mm-hmm. and you know they're they're pretty good at it. Our, our conversions good, so I mean it's good. Mm-hmm. But I'm I'm always curious as to why are we not scaling it? So, like for example, if I spent a thousand and got back three thousand. Why can't I spend a million and get back three million? Why doesn't it scale? What what breaks? Lots of things break. So one, you might the audience the audience potentially isn't large enough based on what you're doing. So there's an audience size issue potentially. There's a you may not be running on all platforms, right? So one thing is if you have Facebook ads running and they're performing over there. Yeah, through the ad copy and the you know back end funnel system you got set up with all that stuff's working well, that doesn't mean it's going to work over on Google Display because it's a different animal. So you got to get tested over there. Things you know different setups working to see how that operates properly. Then YouTube, YouTube, uh, you know we haven't done a ton of YouTube, but we've dabbled in it, and even that is a different a different animal. So I, the goal is if you're trying to scale up, what happens is you have to start going into other networks and other, other traffic channels. And then you also got to make sure, I think a big challenge too is people will spend the money, but then they can't track where it's going. So they freak out, turn it off, you know, but it's, it, it can be a challenge. And what's going to break is can your system, can the, what happens if when you're at a, let's say you're at, you know, a hundred thousand for the month in ad spend, then you take that up to, you know, 500,000 a month or a million a month on ad spend alone. Like just imagine if, if your, if your sales page or tech goes off for 24 hours or eight hours or three hours, there's an issue, right? That's lost money. Big issue. Yeah. Or your infrastructure. Yep. Or you, yeah, another piece is having the infrastructure potentially to even fulfill. Cause a lot of people love to sell, which is great. You got to sell, but if you don't fulfill, people aren't going to keep coming. People aren't going to come back and get a bad name, everything else. Right. Mm. So that's another I big issue. Forget, there's a bomb right there. Most people don't understand that part, though. Mm-hmm. I'm like, dude, sometimes when you blow up, you could literally implode because you can't deliver. So your product's great. Your offer's compelling. You know, everything's wonderful. You're making millions of dollars, but you can't necessarily deliver everything you sold. Yep. You're you're just out of business eventually with negative re- reviews, et cetera. So Absolutely. always make sure that you're yeah. capable. Mm-hmm. But but uh, as I'm sitting here, because <clears throat> I don't know if you've heard a lot of these podcasts, but I just really ask you questions that I want to know, and they're just allowed to listen. Because <laughs> I, I put myself in, mm-hmm. you know, their shoes, and I am an entrepreneur. Like, to the truest sense, I've got multiple companies. I've got RV dealerships. They're doing advertising. You know, I've got Lightspeed, where you're at now. This is This is a big company. We barely advertise. My buddy the other day does extremely well. He says he's all organic traffic. And I'm like, why would you brag about that? <laughs> oh, dude, I don't have to pay ads. You know, I, I can get tons of ads all for free. Or I mean, uh, traffic. Mm-hmm. If you're getting a bunch of free traffic, don't you think paid ads would give you even more traffic? Absolutely. So even if you can generate organic traffic, that's just one thing. Then you should do paid ads. Then you should do what else? What are what are these other ones? Because to me, paid ads, whether it's on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, TikTok, it's paid ads. Mm-hmm. Okay, so paid ads, you know, you said email. Mm-hmm. 
email marketing, affiliate marketing, get out with other companies that are in the same vertical as you that you guys that have customer bases and lists, you can do that as well. Well, one, one I would call collab, like yep. buddies of mine with lists, Hey, send this out and I'll yep. split it with you or whatever. But you say, and that's like affiliates. Yeah. Affiliate but, marketing. But collab, collabs is like if they got a big database. Yep. Like if I said, dude, you send out to your database. If you send out 75 emails, how big is your database? So our database is over 3 million at this point. That's pretty big. So it's growing. And we're adding, Curated. we're adding between at minimum a hundred, hundred thousand to that, to that business, a hundred thousand, 150,000 new, you know, subscribers a month. How are you so, doing that? Lead magnets? Yeah, we use, we like to use uh, what, what we call the one step funnel. So we like to use polls. So we like, people are passionate, right? People are always passionate about specific topics. And so for us, we like to go up a high, higher level that's going to go after a specific demographic. And after we go after that demographic, we're asking them questions, vote on this, vote on that, right? And we ask these, <coughs> these questions for them to vote and get them in because everybody wants, you know, one, they, everybody wants to be right. They want to be known, they want to believe they're right. And, and then in two, they want to know that other people think like them. So we do these polls that are on hyper- passionate kind of environment like questions and right that gets somebody to engage like highly like, engaging like should the president of the united states be able to shit his pants and remain <laughs> president uh, do that one yeah well we would get banned but why, uh why would you <laughs> on paid traffic you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna get you're gonna get, you banned. get hold on hold on go back <laughs> would you get banned for that yes if you said hey should our president be able to shit his pants in public on national <laughs> news and remain president, you'd get banned for that. Yes. 100%. Why? Well, what if you said, uh, defecated? <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe you, not. No, no, you, you 100% word? because it, I mean, look, you, is it the cuss word or is it censorship? It's censorship in my opinion. So there's censorship. So, there's yeah. real censorship. Yes. So we own a site called American conservatives.com. And, uh, that site is, it took us a while. We already, we were running a simple, very bland poll, nothing crazy uh, on display. And they shut us down telling us that we are against their guidelines and everything else. And when I could never get an answer why we weren't running anything that was out of the realm that was going after the president that was doing anything like that. My belief is the second word in that, uh, in that domain name. So you know, we've got other stuff that's online that doesn't mention conservative stuff like that. But I, I mean, I think it's there. I, I think it's real. Can you can see it right when you're running ads? So, what do you that's say? That's a whole rabbit hole we could go down, though. Yeah, I don't want to go down that. We might we might get suppressed. <laughs> <laughs> My question from a marketing perspective is not how, because I know how, but but when it comes to being reliant on social media you're really putting your business at risk if you ask me. Mm -hmm. So right now when social media is still in existence and it's still effective, I believe people should leverage it like a son of a bitch, but at the same time start compiling their own database, their own lists, if mm -hmm. you will. So if anything were to happen, you can still reach these people just not on social media, not to mention, you know, if, if push came to shove, couldn't you sell those names and leads if you wanted? 100%. So, so if you just got $5 a name, that's 15 million just in your database. Mm -hmm. Do you keep the thing scrubbed and pure? Yeah, so 100%. You got to keep it clean because then there's, you know, you run against issues where your emails get blocked by certain, you know, Yahoo. Like there's an issue right now with Yahoo going on with getting into the inbox. So you got to keep it clean. There's always spam traps, all these things. If you get into that, no one get too techie on some of that stuff, but, but you got to clean it, right? There's tools that allow you to like real time, take out bad emails. So you're only acquiring good emails that you're sending stuff to, but you're 100% on with that. One of the, you know, biggest things that we do, maybe I would have had a better answer earlier. Uh, when you said claim to fame question there is, is probably we're really good at building audiences our own audiences well, that dude. we own. And because if you can do that, if you can grow and build your own audience, you ultimately aren't reliant on stuff over here. Like if Facebook decides they don't want you to run anymore, you still have an audience that you can go make money. But if your business model is sitting there and you're only running ads and the only money, when those ads are on, you're making money. When those ads are off, you're not. Any day, any day that, uh, that faucet could get, sh could get turned off. 
So if you own your own audience, that faucet never gets shut off while you adapt and change. Okay, I'll give you an example. Like right now, I've got a shit ton of listeners. They're called the Bomb Squad. Now that you've listened, you're in the Bomb Squad. Mm -hmm. Although you may not be an active member, you're in the Bomb Squad once you've heard. I'm subscribed. It's on the phone. An episode. But let's say I want to get all my listeners somewhere else. You know what I mean? Because like right now, I don't know who's listening. I don't know who's a listener. I had some guy come up at a, at a speech I was doing one time. Rich dude, good dude, cool dude. Like freaking, I had no clue. He was a freaking subscriber to Dropping Bombs. Mm -hmm. And like, cool. Like, dude, I followed him already. I'm like, dude, no way. You listen to my shit? He's like, dude, I love your podcast. And I'm like, really? And I'm thinking, how? see, how do I not know that? How do I get these listeners off wherever they're listening from and into my quote unquote list. How do I make the list? I simply s set up a page. I mean, it really I have is. one dropping bombs.com. Yeah. Well, do you, is there a subscribe option there right away? Yeah. But, but I, it just takes them to, you know, the Apple or the YouTube oh, where they yeah. subscribe so at. So, I mean, even, even in these episodes or the tail end of these episodes, the beginning of these episodes, you know, you need, you need, you know, dropping bombs.com forward slash subscribe or dropping bombs.com. And then what's that? You just free. put them on a list. Yeah. And you put them into us and let them opt in, right? Let people opt in for a gift. Maybe you're going to give them a free gift. Uh, whatever that's what that I, is, that's, you know? that's, like, that's the part I wanted to hear. Yeah. So what I'm not doing is saying, give me your name and email and phone number in exchange for something. And then once they do that, that's an opt in. Yep. And now I've got these names. Now, second question. Now I put them in a CRM like HubSpot mm -hmm. or Salesforce or Constant Contact or whatever. Yeah. Those services seem to limit you on how many contacts you can put it, put in them without raising your fee. So to put 3 million contacts into one of those services so you can email back and forth and you know mm -hmm. get all those analytics. What does that cost? Oh, a lot. So, so, so you can't just have a 3 million person list without monetizing it. Otherwise yeah. you'd spend a shit ton just to yeah, hold So for us, somewhere. I think we're right around for us to send what we send it like 70, 75 million a month. We end up, we're right around 60, 65,000 a month for that. For to that. be able to do that. Yeah. Yeah. See what most people don't understand that. See that's but you the don't, part. But you don't start there, right? So. No, I know. But like yeah. right now, for example, mm -hmm. I have two, three million people in light speed training on something. Mm -hmm. that's two, three million people. Like if I were to upload those to HubSpot so I could say, Hey, what else you want to train on? You know, which would be a smart yeah. thing for me to do. Cause they're already training. Mm -hmm. They must be interested in training. <laughs> and guess what? I've got shit tons of all, all kinds of training mm -hmm. from freaking think and grow rich, how to win friends, influence people, financial gurus, anything and everything. That's what life speed does. Mm -hmm. So I think to myself, how do you put three million? How do you do it? Like you just, I just opt into a $60,000 package and hope they buy. No, you don't do that. What would I do? Uh, you would simply start small, right? So not all those, you might have 3 million in there, but they might not be all engaged. Right. So, so they charge you per engaged. No, it's not per engaged. They're going to charge you for the, what we CPM, right. For every thousand, that's what we pay on. And our stuff ranges depending on, depending on What's what CPM platform mean? we, yeah. This is a CPM game, right? What's that mean? Uh, it's like basically emails per thousand. So for every thousand What's emails. What's CP we, mean? Uh, it is cost per impression basically is what it is. Why would it be a CPM? They just call it's just what it's called. Why wouldn't it be a CPI? I have no idea. Cost per impression? Cost per million. Cost, I don't even know the, the full breakdown of it, but I just look at it. I don't know if it's CPM, CPA, CPL. So the CPM side of it is... Basically for us, for every thousand emails, we pay anywhere from 40 cents up to 60 cents. So, and depending on the platform we use, I would not recommend going and just mailing 3 million emails. Like you got to go, have they gotten emails before? Have they said they wanted to get emails from you? Have they, right? Well, so there's know, all, these, it, all these, let's pieces. just take it from scratch. I tell everybody right now, Hey everybody, if you, if you want my dropping bombs calendar, you know, it's badass. I'll give it to you free. All you have to do is go to droppingbombs.com and put your name in and we'll send it out. Yep. That's that's a list, isn't it? 
Yes. So now I need more permission to send them shit? No, if they opt in, no. But you were talking about grabbing Do you have to put up disclaimers that says, I, I can send you shit? No. Well, you have, obviously, in your privacy policies and things like that, right? Like how you're going to use their data. I'm gonna but send if you were shit. to just go like some people, I just don't want people to misunderstand like, cause some people are like, I'm going to go buy a list. They go buy a list. Right. And they're like, I got a million emails for $500. Well, do not mail those. Cause they're just going to shut you down. You're never gonna, you're not going to get into the inbox. Right. So don't buy a big list and email them. No. So what you want to do is get them to subscribe. Right. So if you got them and they subscribe, you can mail them all you want. But the, the thing is like, Salesforce, HubSpot, those are great tools. They're more enterprise based. Whereas if you're going to mail you, I mean, and you're just starting out or let's say you've got a hundred thousand emails already, like you can use something along the lines of a Weber active campaign. What's the best one? So I actually just moved everything. I like convert kit or drip are the two that I like. Convert kit or drip. I like those two for and, starting out. And if I'm a, if I'm a, you know, one man band type operation, That's what you I can use. do that myself. Correct. Convert drip or convert kit, convert kit or drip. Yeah. Cause like, I almost want to start over. Cause like we have HubSpot. I spent like a half a million on Salesforce, never used it. it, it they always nickel and dime me every time I wanted to figure out something. It was dumb. Yeah. HubSpot's better. I think. HubSpot's a good tool. But, but so like on my, on my website, bradlee.com, it says join my list, right? Mm -hmm. I've had thousands of people put their name in there, but I don't email them. I don't bother people unless I have something I want to. They want to hear from you. They wouldn't put it in if they didn't want to hear from you. Well, I mean, again, I have nothing to say. You know, I don't do <laughs> weekly newsletters or anything. Now I should, and I will. So why I, don't you send out the news this every, every week you've got a podcast that drops. Every yeah. week you got a YouTube video. Yeah. So, so like I should be leveraging that list and send it to them, Correct. get subscribers up, listeners up mm -hmm. more, see? more downloads, see more growth, more, you know, Everything. more viewership, more, more people impact. getting into your circle, even tighter because they're, they're listening. What happens when you have multiple brands? Like I have closer school where I mm -hmm. teach people sales and persuasion and influence you know, that's a list. And then I've got dropping bombs. That's a list. And mm -hmm. then I've got light speed customers. That's a list. How do you keep all your lists? Yeah, separated? I think I mean, that's, we actually have different brands that have all their own list, but do you have separate accounts for each one? S yes. So you don't, yeah. you don't have one where you're separating them all. Yeah. Well, yes and no. Right. Like we, we do, we use a tomorrow post, which is a tool we use and we can go build in, we've got eight brands in one of our accounts. And so we have it all set up to do it, but I don't like it that way. I would prefer to have a separate uh, login for each one personally, because there's less confusion when, when you outsource and you have your team doing it right. Yeah. So it's less confusion if it's got its own account. I think, you know, the biggest thing though, like with closure school and dropping bombs, there's probably some synergy there between the two, right. To be able to mail, you know, I, or even the hard way, like my book, yeah, the, yeah. I did a pre-sale. I wouldn't create separate lists for those things. I would have them under the Brad Lee dropping bombs. And then you've got from there, you can send out emails for closure school. You can send out an email for the hard way, right? And so one account for Brad Lee yeah. and then all the individual things, just tag them. Is it a tag? Yeah, yeah you tag them. Yeah. Cause right now I have, I have a list of thousands of people that pre-ordered my book and I don't do anything with it. Mm -hmm. Well, I wasn't going to until maybe I come up with another book someday yeah. and then I'd email them and say, Hey, here's my second book, you know, but is it rude or smart to email them other things? Just add them because I won't name names, but I've had people take my name like, Hey, what's your email? Like they're my friend. Mm -hmm. And next thing you know, I'm on their damn list. Like they <laughs> threw every email they ever get onto a list. And now they're hitting me with shit I'm not interested in, yeah. and which causes me to unsubscribe, you know, where, where it's like, dude, this is weird. Like you're my buddy and you st slap me in your list. Yeah, I wouldn't do that. I'd have them subscribe. But so one thing to stay, to go back to staying in touch with them. So one thing we like to do is media hack. So media hacking, we're looking at what's going on in real time. And in the news and the media, all that stuff. Right. And then we're tying stories together with that. And so that, you know, is one way that, why do you, why are you sending them a story? Because if we don't have an, it doesn't always have to be an offer. Right. So on our 
so for example, AmericanConservatives.com, we write content every day and provide that content out. But at the same time, we're, we're a curator, right? We've got some stuff that's just news. We're just curators of, of valuable content. So if you look at something like the hustle that's out there, which is just curated news and, uh, you know, really what you can, what I try and get people to do is like, well, I don't have anything to say or sell. Well, you can curate news because you become the authority that's dropping them the information that they need to see. Right. Or giving them something that's going to help improve their day or giving them a, a tip or a knowledge, something along those lines, or, Hey, did you see this article? You know, cause a lot of times there's so much information. People want to know, well, what, what's, Brad Lee looking at today. What's Brad Lee reading? Right. Yeah. So Dude, you I wish, I wish that I wish you came out with a service and I'll bet you a lot of other people mm -hmm. would where basically you'd take a guy like me and give and sell me. I'd even pay for it. If someone would do this for me, a checklist of everything I need to do where I could turn around and hand it to anyone that knows what we're talking about. Cause again, I'm not, I don't know how to do all this shit, mm -hmm. but I would hire somebody to do it or by the blueprint, meaning Brad, if I were you, dude, the podcast would do this. I'd have every, at the end of every podcast, I'd say this, I'd start building that list. That list would get something you'd have to invent or, or create to, to, to serve that list. I would do this. 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 Mm -hmm. Just the blueprint because dude, you know how much money and shit I'm losing? I don't do any of it. Millions. Millions. <laughs> <laughs> millions dude yeah. which is funny too because i know people that make millions of dollars and i can see holes in their game mm -hmm. and they're like well, i must be doing something right it's when you're making millions of dollars it's harder to feel the millions you're not making mm -hmm. Does that makes sense yeah it's like i'd go into a car dealership and they're killing it and i'm like but you're not doing this 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 dude whatever we're doing is working we're killing it and then, you know, I go in there and make those changes and now we're killing it three times as much. And they didn't realize that they weren't killing it, that it just seemed like it because business was good. Yeah. They were actually sucking hind tit. They just didn't know it. <laughs> well, you're all lot, as good as you know, right? Yeah. But a lot of people yeah. do that. Like mm -hmm. right now I'm aware, dude, I don't even market. Like I don't mm -hmm. even try to do what I should be doing. The podcast, again, I could monetize the podcast. I could be like, let's break. You know, hello, everybody. Uh, today's <laughs> episode is sponsored by freaking Meltdown, Four Fuel, Real Ketones, Novel Energy, and, uh, you know, go get some. All right, back to the show. <laughs> I don't do any of that. Mm -mm. There's value in that, though, not doing it. But, uh, not but, 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 it. but if but, it's your own stuff... Well, there's value in yeah. not taking sponsorships because yeah. I don't think people always want to hear commercials. But but again, Joe Rogan, not that I'm a Joe Rogan, but if there's anybody close, it's me. <laughs> Joe Rogan's <laughs> Joe Rogan's monetizing the shit out of his podcast. Yeah. Now, if I had you know however many followers he he does or subscribers, I hear it's like, uh, even, mm -hmm. I mean, they paid him a hundred million for some reason. Yeah, it's like ridiculous. But if I were there. Maybe I'd take on a sponsor or two, but what other things could I do and should I do is the question. And creating the list is where I was get driving at. Anybody yeah. listening, whatever you're doing, you need to get a website like he's talking about and, and figure out what you can give away in exchange for somebody's name and start building those lists and get it offline somehow. Because right now, if I had a list of 3 million people that list to, to listen to Drop Bombs and iTunes decided to cancel me, I could shoot them all an email and say, hey, guys, I'm over here. Mm -hmm. But if I don't build that list and I just rely on iTunes the whole time to, to deliver the thing, if iTunes decides I said something offensive mm -hmm. and they shut off my podcast, how do, you're done. Well, and the I, people that just, come, they normally just get the push every week, right? Those subscribers just get the push every week it comes, and all of a sudden they don't get it. And Not I don't all know of them are, are. going to go looking. And I don't know who they are. Yeah. But what if I built that list? Well, you, you then know, at I least know. now we know you need to, right? No, oh, well, dude, I already knew that. The question <laughs> is, is how? That's why I'm picking yeah. your brain. Yeah. People listening are already going, dude, I should be doing this. Mm -hmm. Build the lists. Build, you got to own your audience. Build the yeah. lists. Mm -hmm. So if I went and got a drip account and told everybody, hey, d you know, come, come get this. And all of a sudden it started filling up. What do I do with the drip account? Email them through that? Yes. Can I track them through that? Yep. I can see analytics and all that, open rates. Mm -hmm. 
and see what they're opening, what they're doing, what they're clicking. There's unsubscribes, all that shit. everything. And so, it's all compliant. So I don't have to mess with nothing. Correct. Just drip. Yep. Maybe I'll use drip. Why not constant contact survey monkey, a Weber, all that. Uh, a Weber I used in the past, a buddy of mine's account got just shut off one day. So I just, after that happened to him, I just steered clear of him. Uh, Convert kit I like. It's very art simple and easy to use. And if someone's looking for something just very basic, I like drip because it's more it's got more analytics inside of it, right? Better tracking for like what people are doing and how they're engaging and whatnot. So you is, know, it, is it easily integrated into websites? Easily, yeah. So like a lot of things now, when you're building sites, you don't really have to custom code anything anymore, right? Cause they got all these API integrations. So but can I, can I like say build a list here and one goes into drip and one goes into HubSpot? Yes. At the same time, same entry. Yeah. I got to get that done. Dude, yeah. maybe I'll talk to you afterwards <laughs> and figure out some fee where you can come get yeah. me set up. Yeah. So folks, listen, at the end of the day, all this information that you just received is going to be confusing to some and some are going to be saying, yeah, that's exactly what I do for the people that are saying, yeah, that's exactly what I do. What are some things they might not be doing? Like so high level shit. In regards secrets. Secrets. Oh man. Yeah, like dude, you got a lot of experience doing yeah. this since 2011. Shit, dude, you've been doing it a while. I've been doing it since 2006. Well, if that's the but, case, dude, like yeah. that's a long ass time. You you got some secrets, I'm telling you. And so what are some advanced ones? Oh man, I would say like if someone's yeah. listening and they, and they hear this and they go apply it, it's like, dude, that was freaking awesome. Yeah. I think oh, there's, well, I think email and alone, right. Cause so many people don't use it. Uh, I think the other, the other, the other thing, maybe I passed over too quick, but when you're building an audience, it doesn't always have to be super niche down. You can build a bigger audience, right. And if you build a bigger, a, a higher level audience, that is a specific demographic, also buys not only the product service that you provide, but buys products and services from other people. What's going to happen is as you build that audience, you're going to be able to go to other, you can monetize that audience, not only with your own products, but you can go to your, someone else that's in the same vertical as you, that's a complimentary service and say, Hey, look, I can send an email for you if you'd like and promote your stuff. Right. And now they would either pay you for that email or that you, they would pay you per sale. Right. So I think that's a, an easy win for people right there going higher level. Um, you know, on the funnel side, there's, you know, there's so many, the ad congruency is super important, right? That's not the sexiest thing in the world, but it will get you a win, uh, if it's not working. But if we wanted to get real techie, we could start talking about, you know, scripts Another another list that people can build right now is, uh, there's a tool, uh, push monkey, Right. So when you go to someone's website, I don't know if you have this on yours, but you go to your website and now you can have them subscribe. So you can send them push notifications to, to their computer as well, right through the browser. So that's another way there's the key is how to co-reg uh, another option opportunity, right? Go find somebody that says maybe someone's buying a bunch of traffic in your space. And what, what they want to do is reduce, they can't quite monetize. So they want to reduce their lead cost. We had a, we have a company we do this with now They're they're, they're paying more per lead to get a lot of leads. And the way that we're, we've worked with them is they came to us and cut a deal and said, let's co-reg. So we get a copy of their leads and we're set up to do that. So now we pay less per lead. They pay less, they can monetize faster, but we get a really good lead cost count to grow our subscriber base pretty quick. Um, you know, another, another way, if you get really heavy into email marketing, maybe you've got You've got your three offers, right? Maybe you have three different verticals or three different offers. Once they subscribe, you can put a, a page up that says, Hey, what one do you want? What one do you want to learn about? And then as soon as they click that, right, they click the, uh, I want to learn about dropping bombs. They hit dropping bombs. Now you have an auto responder series that automatically goes out to them specifically on dropping bombs and whatever it is you're going to sell. If it's closure school, then that goes out if they pick closure school, right? So there's different, you can start segmenting in the back end of these tools, especially through drip. So when they fill out a, uh, and they tell you what their interest is, maybe they click and say, Hey, I want to learn about health finance or in the email crypto. they're clicking. This. Yeah. You can, you can do it in an email, right? It's tools are crazy, what you can do with them, but Hey, you want to learn about crypto's big, right? Now everyone's, everyone's loving crypto, right? So crypto, um, uh, 
you know, stocks or, you know, uh, whole life policies, right? Whatever. Just use this as an example. Well, you can click on, if they, I want to learn about this one the most, they click on it and then you can automatically have a email series that goes out to them telling them, Hey, you know, here's why you want to get whole life. Here's how you want to do it. Right. And educating them on it and then making the offer to them. So you can do a really deep segmentation with these lists over time. So one thing that we do on our side is we know that, yeah, one of our subscriber bases that we've got might be 150,000 people. Right. But we've created sub segments of people. 30,000 have always opened and clicked on our health offers. And maybe, you know, 25,000 have always opened and clicked on our finance offers. So what, uh, what we can do is target our new, we can test a new offer really, really quick to that finance segment right out of the gate and just send a 25,000, right? So there's a lot of segmentation stuff that you can get done. Targeted messaging, I think is a huge thing that most people don't do. It's usually just mass broadcast, right? Mm. There has to be a lead capture on every website you have, yeah? Yeah, you, 100%. Because, like, if you go to Dropping Bombs, I don't think there's a lead capture on there. You got to have it. And then, but more importantly, like, once, if you have it, you should be mailing them. I know, but, like, Dropping Bombs, I'm pretty sure there's no lead capture. Closer School, there's no lead capture. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's ways to get a hold of us. There's ways to inquire, but there isn't a, give me your name, and I'll give you this, which is, to me, a lead capture. Yeah. You know, you go to bradlee.com, it says, join my list. I say underneath, you know, I, I send out some cool things from time to time and I ain't going to spam you because I don't, I mm-hmm. don't even send them anything. <laughs> but if I, you know, yeah. get on my game, I will, I'll, mm-hmm. you know, like you said, they're opting in because they do want to get shit from you, you know, yeah. newsletters. Maybe I start a, you know, monthly blog even, you know, where it only goes to them. Like, Hey, yeah. give me your name and I will give, and I will send only to you and the people on this list, my weekly thoughts, you know, my, you know, call it fricking, you know, smart bombs, which is just yeah. clips of five episodes with just the bombs cut out. And that's what they get. Oh, 100%. You know, they're like, Oh, I like that. Just give me pure bombs and get yourself a copy or, or someone to write the copy. If you don't already write an email cop email writer that can take that bomb and put it into a lesson. Yeah. You know, so for us, See what I'm e- talking about, see like, this is the t- <laughs> shit I'm talking about. How do we get it done? See, <laughs> so, I like to, I like to just hire someone and say, yeah. okay, go do it. <laughs> uh, I don't want you to call me on Saturdays, but I uh, was no, just joking. But uh, there's a, uh, you know, with that, the, the big piece on, on that email side is one people to talk about another tip for you is the way that I prefer emails to go out is if I'm going to sell, there's two different ways. There's the curated model, which we use in the conservative side, but then in the ed- expert kind of model, right? Or education model, you can do that, but you can also mix in nurture and pick emails, which I learned from a buddy of mine back in the day. Uh, most underrated marketer, I think in the space, buddy Travis Sago, just super smart dude, but he, uh, he does these nurture and picks and it's, you come in with almost like everybody wants a big aha, right? That's dropping bombs is a big aha, like one thing. Right. And so you can put it in the email, the lesson that they're going to learn, but you know, Hey, here's the problem. Here's how I experienced that problem. Here's what I did to solve it. And here's your big aha moment. Right. So you got bonding inside that email and it's an engaging email. It's a story driven email as opposed to like some people try to come in and tell you three or four different things and make three or four different points. And they do these long sales piece. Like it doesn't need to be that way. People are, if it's too much, people don't engage. If it's super simple, easy to understand and it has that one big aha, it's going to stick. Obviously, you know, they're going to remember it when they read it. And then also another thing in email is a lot of people try and write to everybody, but not everyone on your subscriber base will have the same problem. So trying to write to everybody makes it tough. So when you do start emailing regularly, you can simply say, all right, there, here is the demographic or the person's problem I want to speak to. And now maybe that's 30% of your list. Now you're speaking directly at 30%, which is going to do. And then the next day you speak to the other problem that might be another 50% of the list, right? So what's happening is you're speaking directly to people. And so as opposed to trying to speak to everybody. But you can't send it just to those people. because No, you can send it out and the ones that need to read it are going to read it. 
So you, so what yeah, you're I'm saying, not worried about everybody opening and everybody clicking, you know? What yeah. I mean? But so what you're, what you're saying is like the subject line in the first paragraph should say, Hey, this is for X type of person yeah, or this problem or state the problem or now here's the problem. It. This email discusses. Yeah. And then if, you know, if it applies, read on. Yeah. If it doesn't. Delete. Kind of. Yeah. I would, I would write it as if they, it does apply to them, but cause you already know who you want to read it and you're talking to them and the ones who doesn't apply to you just won't read it, you know? Got it. Well, dude, easier said than done, man. But I would highly suggest everybody get on this shit because yeah. building a database, I should have been doing it for years. I'm going to figure out who I can get to be my list master or database guru. What, what, who, what position would I be looking for? If I, let me describe the position I'm looking for mm-hmm. and then tell me what I'm looking for. I want someone because I can go find all the lists and I can create lists from mm-hmm various software that we've used. Like I can go right now and say, Hey, send me all the names that have ever opted into Bradley.com. Well, I'll get, let's say 10,000, but there might be 18,000 from the past seven years that went into some other database. Mm -hmm. But now I'm not sure. I don't want to confuse lists and, and make assumptions and have a big mess. So I would just say, let's start now, go get me the Bradleys that have opted in in the last such and such. Boom. Now there's a list. Okay, go get me all the dropping bombs and every dropping bombs from now on, I will ask people to go here and, and exchange. So that'll grow mm-hmm. and then start growing these lists. That's the database. Mm-hmm. Then someone to know now, okay, I need a newsletter to go out to this one. I need a vlog to go out to this one. So some, some sort of how do you work that list mm-hmm. that knows those things and can hire and coordinate whoever we need to facilitate to where I'm just, I'm, I just have a list of things I'm supposed to do. And then they take it and blah, and it just does it. What's that position called? Oh, uh, it's a email marketing coordinator, maybe. Right. I mean, you, you want somebody Is that what they're called in the industry. That's who we hire to do our stuff. Now and, and they understand I, I think for your database. Case, what's that? They understand databases. They, they understand. should understand email marketing. They should understand I think in you have already got a content editor, right? You've got content creators that can help put the information together. Cause I think really, you know, the email coordinator is going to be able to manage the list, market the list, be able to get emails out to the list, but they may not be a copywriter. They may not be the content creator, you know, but they know how to, they know how to design and put it together and send it out. Right. So email marketing managers who I'm looking for, 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 Various brands, really. Yep. And I and I would, do you mail your, so closure school, do you have leads over there or just buyers? What do you mean? Do you have, there's like a lead of somebody who's subscribed and interested and then obviously your customer. Subscribe to what? I don't know. So if you don't, maybe. Closure school, I say, hey, if you want to learn how to sell, close, persuade, influence, and become a better human, go take this course and subscribe to closure school. Then they go to a website and they either buy or they don't. I don't. I don't retarget people that are, that went there. I don't email anybody. I don't have a lead capture. It's just they buy or they don't. If they buy, then you mail them after. No, that. then they join and you know they're included. Uh, I don't email them anything, and the people that bought and canceled, which I'm sure there are, I don't follow up and say why'd you cancel? Where'd you go? Like that's what I should be doing. <laughs> But yeah. see, I need people to do that. I can't yeah. do it all oh, myself, yeah. dude. My whole freaking day would be filled. Oh, yeah. So, like, I'm trying to figure out who should I go hire to begin building this. Because mm-hmm. in the next 12 months, I'm blowing my brand up like you wouldn't believe. Paid ads up the yin-yang, boosting. You know, I'll spend freaking all kinds of money just just to have people see me. You know, yeah. hey, who is this freaking clown? I want new audiences. To, to, to witness the, the Brad isms. And then some are going to be like, who's this clown? And then some people are gonna be like, Oh, I love this guy. You know? Cause I get DMS and shit where people are like, dude, I just started following you a week ago. I can't, I love your content. You know, do you have books? Do you have courses? What do you have? And I'm answering my own DMS and I just go, you know, Bradley.com, you know, it's whatever I got's there. I'm just not taking it seriously. Mm-hmm. And I think I should. Mm-hmm. And I think everyone listening should, 
And I would normally say, call this dude. But the problem is, you ain't going to help him. You're gonna, I don't, don't want to do that shit. No, I mean, we, we do. Uh, if people already have stuff in place, we'll come in and do some consulting. I, when I say we don't do the, we'll build the plans. We'll execute help with the plan. But we don't, we, the way I do it now is people come to my office and hang out for a day. And, Where's that at? In, in North Carolina. Charlotte, oh. North Carolina. Oh, yeah. So, Charlotte. Yeah. Cool town. Yeah, it's, it's fun. We're out there on Lake Norman, so. So how about this folks, season. if you, if you want to take a shot, go to natekennedy.com. You can f- hit him up in the DM at Nate Kennedy MD and see if he can help you or just listen to this episode again and take copious notes and then go find and hire somebody that understands email marketing, mm-hmm. creating databases. Cause it, it's, it's invaluable, dude. Oh yeah. Building your own audience. The way I describe it is when some, sometimes people ask me what I do, I try and explain, well, you know how people go to, uh, when you own your own audience, think about it, people are going to Facebook and paying them massive amounts of money to get in front of the audience they've curated. So if you own your own audience, not only you don't have to pay to go, <laughs> so if you own your own audience, you don't have to go pay for those people because you already got them. But more importantly, other people will pay to get to your audience. So now you're kind of flipping flipping the script and you have people that will more than happy pay you a large sum of money just to get in front. Yeah. Now, I want to give you, I guess, one more Bob tactic or trick. One thing that we are doing very, we're, we are going all in on here right now is text. So text messages are a way of like massive growth right now and getting into, obviously we're getting people to subscribe. They're subscribing to the text message. There's ways to do it, right? So we're trying to grow some massive subscription-based stuff. One of we, in our email business, you know, we get a specific amount based on, you know, list size, people will pay us. But someone in our space, I just found out, has a 900,000 person text list. And guess how much they make to send one text message? 100 gram. Oh man, that's high. 50, 50K. Just send one text message. One day, one text, fifty grand. As long as as long as it goes nine hundred thousand people, dude, people matter. will pay that. Yep. Hey, mm-hmm. I'll give you fifty grand to ask nine hundred thousand people to opt in for a free case. Yep. Boom. But so. that but but I mean that that is sounds like, well, of course. But how come everybody's not building their list then? I just, I, you know, I, I don't think a, anyone's put a, the value behind it. I don't, dude, I, 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 I know I do this stuff daily and I'm like, why have I been doing it? So well, I don't know about value, on bro. It. Cause guys like me, it's, yeah. it's, we don't have time or the know-how yeah. and we don't have anyone on our team that's smart enough to say, dude, you need to be doing this. Like, like I, I follow instruction real easy. Like if you were, if you worked here, we'd already have this. You just said, Brad, we got to segment these lists and you got to, you know, mm-hmm. ask for their info and let's curate these lists and let's cross promote and let's freaking you know, go tell your other clients that, Hey, I'll give you access to these lists. And I mean, it's crazy mm-hmm. right now. I'm trying to, I'm trying to, uh, get 300 people to go to this Miami event, 300 more. And it's, it's in 30 days. And it's like, if I had all these lists, dude, I just go blink. Yeah. Hey, and, and I could say, you know, dropping bombs might go and these people would be interested, but I don't want to just cake everybody where it's like these people shouldn't even have been sent that email. So that's the, you know, the management of it all. Mm-hmm. You know, I want a spreadsheet that says dropping bombs, you know, and a running total. How many I got to, you know, now and how many I got next week and wh- what is our increase and mm-hmm. like true analytics, like intelligent shit. I need someone to come in and own that. So again, if someone's listening, hit me up. <laughs> if you know what you're doing, I'm going to double check. If not, uh, well, then I'll find somebody between now and then anyway. But dude, I appreciate you coming in, man. You got some good knowledge. Anything you'd leave off with? Yeah, just drive home again. One more point. You know, build your own audience, control your audience, own your audience. I think of anything over the last few years that we've learned, owning your audience is super important. Uh, you can't be shut down, you know, uh, have a backup of your audience. So if you got a large 2 million person email database, make sure you got a backup of it just in case. Uh, like happens. how do you back it up? CSV files? Just, yeah. Just CSV export it, you know, and you got it and understand it that you've got your copy of it. And well, at least, at least it. as of that day, yeah, cause that, it grows every yeah, day. Yeah, it grows and you constantly do it. But is there any service that automatically backs it up? 
Uh, we don't have one, uh, but what, what we've I got could, a, we've got our leads in different spots. We got stuff in three different spots. They're in the the place we mail from. We got them into one database and another database. So, you have to pay for all that storage. Uh, yeah. So, and but it I mean, it's not much. So, but, it ain't but it's it's peace of mind. I'll sixty take it. grand a month for well, that's for all the emails we're sending, right? Yeah, but still sixty grand a month, dude. That's seven twenty a year. Mm-hmm. That's not chump change. No. Normal people can't do that. Well, yeah. Keep in mind, we've we've been it. We are scaling, and and, and fr- you know, it's funny because I I know we pay that, but I've got some friends in the space that pay you know three x that. You heard of Joel Marion? Oh uh, yeah, I heard he has a nineteen million person. I list. would imagine their thing is huge. We nineteen used to promote, million people. Yeah, they curated, bio, bio trust, and right? scrubbed. Is what, what he is? So, well, he has several yeah. lists, I'm sure. Yeah. But dude, like when he sends something out for somebody, dude, it's like he becomes the biggest affiliate. He won't oh, yeah. send anything to anybody, but mm-hmm. that's the dude that I've, I've been introduced to that had a 19 million person list. Three million is the second highest I've ever heard. Like that's a good list. Yeah, we're we're growing now. It's not all engaged too. You know, the biggest thing is uh, make sure the people you are mailing are engaged. How you know, do you, if they're not? What do you do? Kick them out? Yep. Get them off your list. Why is Get that important? Yeah, I mean, we try and re-engage them. But if they don't engage, you're just, it's funny because back, back in the day, it was, you know, in the, in the uh, real estate marketing space, when I was over there, all these guys would be like, oh, my list is 150,000 people. And it, it was, it was a measuring contest of who had the biggest list. Right. And then you find out like, well, I don't care how big it is. I want to know how engaged it is. Just like followers. Yeah. I so, got people with 4 million followers making fun of my half million but I get more comments, more mm-hmm. likes, more everything than they do because it's not engaged or they're fake. Yeah. Yep. It's, it, there's no could, value in, in an unengaged follower. Yeah. There's, there's vanity numbers for sure that people look at. Right. But then at the same time, it, it's engagement. Yeah. I'd rather, I'd rather have engagement over anything. So without engagement, you just fall on deaf ears no matter what. So dude, good advice folks share this out. If it wasn't for you, it might be for someone else. Go follow him at Nate Kennedy, MD, go get his book, all gas, no breaks, or check him out at NateKennedy.com. Until next time, keep it real.